Good evening, Saints. Welcome to the Gospel Light and Truth Crusade. I'm Tony Keaton. For years, the mental health field has sought to understand why women suffer more from psychological disorders like depression, bipolar disorder, and anxiety than do men. An article entitled, Why Do Women Get Depressed More Than Men?, tackles this subject. The article quotes a book entitled, A Deeper Shade of Blue, A Woman's Guide to Recognizing and Treating Depression in Her Childbearing Years. The author offers these particulars about depression in women. Quote, Depression is about twice as common in women as in men, with about one in four women suffering from depression at some point during her lifetime. Depression may strike at any time, but women appear to be particularly vulnerable during their childbearing years. Women are at highest risk for depression during pregnancy and shortly after delivery. At no other point are women more vulnerable to depression than during their childbearing years. How can we explain this susceptibility to depression? Unquote. And the author goes on to postulate that it may be because of hormonal changes in a woman's reproductive system during her childbearing years that may be responsible for the disproportionately high incidence of depression and anxiety in women at that time. That might be true, but it fails to explain why women continue to suffer from psychological problems like depression and anxiety long after their childbearing years. As Protestant Christians, that is, Bible-believing Christians, we must remember that everything in the physical world has a spiritual origin, and this holds especially true of psychological disorders. If, therefore, we cannot explain something medically, it is possible that the explanation is not medical, but in fact spiritual. Let us therefore go to the Holy Bible and see what the Bible has to say about this, because you may be surprised to know that the Bible does in fact have something to say about this. But before we open our Bibles, let us bow our heads in prayer and go to the throne of grace and ask for the Lord's blessing during this teaching. We pray. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would send your blessed Holy Spirit to open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts to this teaching. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Now, let us open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3. This chapter deals with what is commonly called the fall of man, that is the sin of Adam and Eve. Now, we know that uh, God had told, commanded Adam and Eve that they must not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for if they did this, they would surely die. Now, the serpent, uh, Satan, disguised as a serpent, caught Eve and convinced her that God was lying, that if they were to eat of the fruit, they would not surely die, but that their eyes would be opened and they would become as gods, knowing good and evil. And the Bible goes on to say that when Eve saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was able to make one wise, then she took of the fruit and ate of it, and shared it with her husband Adam. Now God comes upon the pair, and he's looking for Adam, and Adam was hiding from the Lord God, and said that he did so because he did not want God to see him naked. God then says, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of this tree that I told you not to eat of? And Adam confessed that he had, in fact, eaten of the tree, and he did so at the behest of his wife, whom God had given him. She, in turn, blamed the serpent, saying that the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. The Lord God has some choice words for first the serpent, then Eve, and then Adam. But it is what God tells Eve that concerns this discussion. And I'll pick that up at Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. 
Quote, Unto the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Unquote. First, notice that the word sorrow is mentioned twice. It is generally understood that because the word sorrow here is mentioned together with the word conception, that both instances have to do with childbirth, but they don't. The first instance of the word sorrow has to do with worry, while the second instance has to do with childbirth. To prove this, we'll go to Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, which tells us that the first instance of the word sorrow is the Hebrew word itzabon, which is number 6093, which means worrisomeness or trouble. The second instance of the word sorrow is the Hebrew word etzeb, and that's Strong's number 6089, and is said to mean painful toil or a pang, as in birth pangs. In other words, labor. We may therefore reword the passage in modern day English to read, I will greatly increase your worries and your pain during childbearing. If you think about it then, there is, it's, it's no wonder that uh, women during their childbearing years are more susceptible to mental illnesses such as depression and bipolar disorder and other things during this time. God mentioned those in the very same sentence, that he would increase or multiply a woman's worries and that he would also multiply her pain, her labor pains during childbirth. It is a curse from God that is a result of the sin of Eve in the Garden of Eden. But it doesn't end there. Remember, God went on to say that thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, this is actually very important because here God is explaining in what way women will be worrying. In other words, what will be the source of their frustration, their depression, their anxiety? The first thing he says is that thy desire shall be unto thy husband. Now, the word desire in this context is the Hebrew word teshukah which is in Strong's Concordance number 8669 and is based on a Hebrew root that means to run after or to stretch out after. And this word actually means longing, longing. So what God is, what he did was he cursed Eve and thus her descendants, which is all womankind, where they will always be chasing after a man. He says that your desire will be unto your husband. And what does that mean? He will, you will long after your husband, or if you're not married, you will long after a man. And so if you think about this, a lot of married women are having problems in their relationships. And it's it's a lot of times it's because she cares more about the man or her husband than he cares for her. That's In a lot of situations, not always that way, but she's longing after a husband. Her primary preoccupation is how to best please him, how she can make herself more desirable for him. And this is a major source of frustration for many married women, believe it or not. Most will not admit that, but a lot will. And so this is the curse that Eve that God cursed Eve with because you see she had a lot of free time on her hands and she used that free time to listen to uh, Satan rather than listen to her husband Adam so God cursed Eve and thus all her descendants that they will always be longing after their husbands and and wanting to know how they may best best please them if a woman is not married it's the same thing think about the single women that are out here that don't have a husband, their primary preoccupation is in finding a husband. It is. And a lot of women, 
we all know this. If any woman, woman within the sound of my voice knows that this is, this is true. If she's not yet married, she's wondering if she ever will be married. And we all know about women and their biological clocks. They're wondering if they're going to ever have children. If they're in their 30s, approaching 40, they're, they, they become very concerned as to whether or not they're going to ever find a husband and get married. You may have heard about uh, Christine Chubuck, who was a uh, television reporter in Florida. And she's uh, known for being the first person to commit suicide on a live television broadcast. She suffered greatly from depression because she could not find a date and she had no boyfriend. And she lamented because she was almost 30 years old and she had never had an intimate relationship with a man before. So she was extremely concerned about that and she suffered seriously from depression and contemplated suicide and eventually did take her own life. This is what a Wikipedia article says about her. And I don't want to bring any, I'm not trying to cast any dispersion upon her memory at all. I'm only using this as an example that it is true that when God said that he would curse women with the desire for a man, that's exactly what he did. I want you to listen to what it says about Christine Chubuk uh, in relation to her desire to have an intimate relationship with a man. Quote, her focus on her lack of intimate relationships is generally considered to be the driving force for her depression. Her mother later summarized, quote, her suicide was simply because her personal life was not enough, unquote. She lamented to co-workers that her 30th birthday was approaching and she was still a virgin who had never been on more than two dates with a man. Her brother Greg later recalled several times she had gone out with a man before moving to Sarasota, but agreed she had trouble connecting socially in the beach resort town. He believed her constant self-deprecation for being dateless contributed to her ongoing depression. In a later interview, Greg stated that Christine had been in two serious relationships. The first had been when she was a teenager and was with a man in his 20s who had subsequently died in a car accident. And the second had been as an adult, but she had broken it off under pressure from her father because the boyfriend was Jewish. According to a 1974 Sally Quinn article in the Washington Post, Chubuk had an unrequited crush on co-worker George Peter Ryan. She baked him a cake for his birthday and sought his romantic attention, only to find out he was already involved with sports reporter Andrea Kirby. Kirby had been the co-worker closest to Chubuk, but she was offered a new job in Baltimore, which had further depressed Chubuk. Chubuk's lack of a romantic partner was considered a tangent of her desperate need to have close friends, though co-workers said she tended to be brusque and defensive whenever they made friendly gestures toward her. She was self-deprecating, criticizing herself constantly, and rejecting any compliments others paid her. Years later, her her brother Greg recalled that she displayed many symptoms of bipolar disorder, which was not generally recognized in the psychiatric community at the time of her death, unquote. Now, you can argue that this is just a coincidence, but I don't think it is. Christine Schubach wanted a man so badly that it was she was constantly preoccupied with finding one. And so here she was almost 30 years old and hadn't found a serious relationship and was constantly preoccupied with the fact that she was approaching 30 years old and had never had been in a, 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 a sexual relationship with anyone, still a virgin. And it drove her to eventually take her life. And if you've been around for any length of time, you've been, if you've been an adult for 20, 30 years, then you know that there was a time when there were many women that were doing this. Now what you have is women because of this, not just the Me Too movement, but women's lib has been going on for quite a few years now. And so very few women are going to tell you that it's a problem for them that they can't find a man. 
And, and so, but there was a time when women were very frank about that. If they could not find a man, they were basically saying that their lives were over. There were plenty of women at one time that were committing suicide because they could not find a man. So this is coming from, this is coming from God. God ordained this because of Eve's disobedience, because she wouldn't listen to her husband and she went astray and she doomed the whole world. God made it so that a woman, she may not be married, but her, her mind is going to be constantly on finding a husband. And if she does find one, then her mind is going to be, she's going to be continuously preoccupied with how she can keep him. And there are plenty of women that are in that situation. They have a man and they're worried about him seeing somebody else that's prettier or that's younger. You know, this, this does happen. And in a lot of instances, the husband has not given the wife any reason to feel this way, but she is still worried and feeling this way. And, and I would argue that it's because God has, has basically engineered women to be this way since Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden. And even in situations where the woman is not preoccupied with pleasing her husband, you will find that a lot of women that there are women that step out on their husbands and they go find another man. And what you will find most often in these situations is the things that they don't go through at home with their own husbands, they're going through with the man that they're messing with on the side. So there, there are women that do that. They try to escape the situation that they're in and they get another relationship only to find themselves having the same problems in the other relationship. And that's because God has cursed women. With, they're going to be concerned about the man that they're with. And that's only the beginning because God also said that he shall rule over thee. And so the woman, the, the second source of frustration for many women is going to be the fact that the husband is the boss. A lot of women do not like that. They do not appreciate the fact that the man that they're married with or who they live with is the boss, that he has to be in charge. They want to be in charge of the relationship. They don't want the man to be in charge. That's what women's lib is all about, feminism and Me Too movement and all of this. That's what that's all about. That's about women trying to take power. And this whole, even this whole women's empowerment movement, that's what it's about. It's not empowering women. What it actually is, is taking the power away from the man. So it's about women supplanting the husband in the home or in the relationship. They want to be the boss. The author of A Deeper Shade of Blue touches upon this very subject, quote, Many have attributed the disparity in the frequency of depression in men and women to the various stresses women face as a result of their gender and the demands women face as they occupy multiple and often conflicting roles within the family, unquote. Now that statement says a mouthful. You see, there should not be any conflicting roles within the family. There are three roles in a conventional family, the husband, the wife, and if they have children, the child or children. Those roles should never conflict. A husband should not seek to be a wife. A wife should not seek to be a husband. And the children ought not seek to usurp their parents. And the parents ought not attempt to become children. The roles in a conventional family are defined and are clear. The only way that there can be conflicting roles is when someone is either not doing their job or someone else feels that they ought to be doing the job of the other person. So if you have a husband that doesn't want to be a husband and he relinquishes that right to his wife, or you have a wife that does not like being a wife and she usurps the, the authority of her husband and takes on that role, then of course you're going to have conflict. And, and listen to what the book said. The author of uh, A Deeper Shade of Blue has even said that this disparity in the frequency of depression in, in men and women is due to the various stresses that, women, stresses that women face as a result of their gender and the demands that they face 
as they occupy multiple and even conflicting roles. Women are not out there becoming children, so that's not the roles that they're talking about. They're saying, when they say conflicting roles, they're saying that a woman is, not only is she a homemaker, but she's also providing for the family. She's also, she's doing more than just her job. In some instances, it's necessary because the husband's not doing his or because there's not a man there. I can understand that. But there are instances, and they are many, where the woman is, she's stressed out because she's trying to do her husband's job. She's not letting him do his job. So it's something that's happening. And this author obviously knows this. And it's, uh, it's something that's known in the mental health field. And this is a major source of frustration for many women. They want to be in charge. And because they can't be, then they're, they are suffering psychologically because they're just, many are outraged, others are, de are depressed. They don't appreciate the fact that men are always going to be in charge because God has ordained it so. And they know this. They know in their hearts because they, not all women know the Bible, but enough women know enough about the Bible to know that God has ordained this to be. And that's a major source of frustration for many women. Women have bounced from relationship to relationship because they can't be in charge. And others have just decided that because they don't want to a man to rule over them, that they would just decide not to be with a man at all. There are a lot of women that are actually becoming lesbians because they would prefer to be in a relationship with a woman rather than be in a relationship with a man and he be in charge of her. He, they, they, some women are so against that that they are willing to do that. They take that route out. I had a friend that actually did that and admitted to me, that was why she did it. So it's happening. So what is a woman to do if she's suffering from some sort of mental illness and she's in her childbearing years and even afterwards? Okay, we started this discussion uh, talking about the fact that uh, there is a disproportionate number of women who suffer from mental illness and those who are of childbearing age, that is around 18 through 30, seem to be more susceptible to falling prey to mental illness than women outside of that, that age bracket. And we've gone to the Bible and we've discussed why that is, at least from my perspective, what the Bible tells me. So what is a woman to do if she's suffering from mental illness and she doesn't know why and she wants to get, she wants to correct that? What does she do? Well, I'll go to the Bible. And this is the Apostle Paul and he's in his uh, first uh, epistle to Pastor Timothy. So we're talking 1 Timothy and we're in chapter 2. This is what Paul is saying about women in the church. So you just read between the lines here and see if we can't come up with, a, with what Paul is saying here. Starting at uh, chapter 2, verse 8. Quote, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And this is the important part. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, Unquote. So what is Paul saying here? Paul is saying that it was that he's recognizing the fact that 
uh, God has ordained it that the woman will be in subjection to the man. And this is because of what Eve did in the garden. This was known in the old world, in the new world that it's being, it's known also, but it's being rejected because Satan is busy trying to destroy what God is, what, what God has ordained will be. Satan doesn't like it at all. He wants to send everybody to hell and he wants to destroy every godly institution, including that of marriage, especially that of marriage. And the way he does that is to have the woman usurp the authority of the man and in so doing destroy God's hierarchy for the family. So Paul is saying that if the woman is modest, that she dress modestly and that she is, listen, shamefacedness and sobriety. It doesn't mean she should walk around and be ashamed of being a woman, but walk around. What it's trying to say is that she should understand that it was the role that Eve played <laughs> that cursed the world. Were it not for what Eve did, there wouldn't be sin in the world right now. But it was because of Eve that she brought that sin into, she helped bring that sin into the world, I should say. She was the, the driving force that that happened. Satan deceived her. The Bible says that Adam was not deceived, but Eve being deceived was in the transgression. And so women, if they would understand that things would not be where they are right now, were it not for Mother Eve, and were it not for the millions of women around the world right now who are following in her footsteps, the world would be a better place. And if they conducted themselves in such a manner that they showing that they understand that and that they know that the, 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 the remedy for that, the antidote for that is for a woman to be humble, to be modest and to not usurp the authority over the man. If she would understand that, then the Apostle Paul, speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ, says that, quote, she shall be saved in childbearing if they, meaning her and her husband, continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So that's how a woman's going to be saved. If you notice, most of the women that are walk not all, for certain not all, but a lot of women who are walking around now with mental illness, they're single. And there's a reason for that. A lot of women, a, a man's just not going to tolerate a lot of things that women are doing. And if the women can't tolerate her husband being in charge, she's going to leave him. And because she's cursed in this way, then she's going to suffer from mil mental illness for real. So there are a lot of single women around who are mentally ill and they're single because they're mentally ill and they're mentally ill because they are single. If they would humble themselves, if they would go to the Lord Jesus Christ on their knees, understanding the role that Eve played in the destruction of righteousness in this world, bringing about a necessity for a savior. If they would understand that, and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to grant them a husband, resolving in their minds to be a good wife, a good mother, and that she would promise, and not just promise, but actually in practice, honor and obey her husband, then God would save her and her mind and her marriage and her children. That's important because right now we see families being destroyed left and right. And it's because many women do not agree that they should be subject to their husbands and that they should be modest in apparel and that they should honor and obey their husbands, recognizing his authority and not usurping his authority. If women would remember this, then I can tell you right now, mental illness with women would drop dramatically. The numbers would show that something is happening and what's happening, what would be happening is that women would be recognizing that they should not be usurping the authority of their husbands and God would heal them. So I thank you again for joining me here at the gospel light and truth crusade. 
Find us on the web at www.gospellightandtruthcrusade.org. You can also find our blog at www.thestillman.com. As always, saints, be encouraged and look up, for your redemption draweth nigh.